So now we are going into the second part of our journey, which is basically feature extraction. So now, as of now, we have talked about data extraction, pre-processing and cleaning. The next part of this lecture is basically structure and feature extraction. So, so our friend John was almost on track. He had figured out everything about, he had done his missing value replacement. He has done his outlier value replacement. And now he has taken care of skewness, right? What more do you expect of him? Well, there's slight like one bit which is still left to tackle, which is basically how do you handle uh, normal distribution? What you have done as of now is basically doing skewness. You tackle, if there's a skewness, what you did was you kind of did some log transformation or square root transformation and made that data look like a normal distribution, right? But in some cases, you might, if it might not be just that the data doesn't belong from a normal distribution, it's from some other distribution, right? How do you, how do you kind of take care of those facts? How do you kind of transform your data to a more normal distribution kind of a setting? So for that, there are a couple of techniques, but before that we let's understand what does even normalization mean? So before we kind of jump into exactly how you do standardization, let's, let's understand what exactly a normalization means. So normalization is nothing but a distribution which is got mean equals to zero and sigma equals to one. We have already draw, talked about this in a while just back. So all you have to do is basically take, given you have multiple data features, right? So not all of them would be centered around zero, right? And not all of them would have a sig, not all of them would have a variance which is equals to one. So all you have got to do is take features and reduce them and transform them somehow such that they have a mean equals to zero and they have a standard deviation equals to one. That's all you have got to do. So that is, if you can, if you're able to do that, then you would at least be sure that it's in some way normally distributed, right? So this particular technique is called standardization. Standardization is recommended when at least you're doing linear regression. If you're doing some other machine learning techniques like say decision tree or a logistic regression, probably logistic regression, but if you're doing something more exotic like decision tree, random forest, you may not need to do standardization. But at least when you're doing linear regression, it's definitely recommended because we know from linear regression lectures that it's mandatory to have your data normally distributed. So that's what we are going to do here. Standardization is that technique. It takes the data and it's make, it does some transformations. We are going to understand what the transformation is. But whatever that transformation is, it's basically going to do this simple thing. It's going to make your data have a mean which is equals to zero and a standard deviation equals to one. That's about it. But before we kind of do that, let's understand what does exactly standard deviation. So now you have in a discrete example, so you have got multiple values, x1, x2, x3, let's say t. And out of x1, x2, x3, all of them have say mean mu, which is equals to x1 plus x2 plus x3 by three. Now clearly this mean, until and unless it's a coincidence, is probably not equals to zero, right? But what you need to do is somehow change this distribution, somehow change these values instead of using x1, x2, use some other set of values such that those values are centered around mean equals to zero, right? So those values should have a mean equals to zero. So what do you do is this. So this is a transformation which is called, which are you are probably familiar with uh, from normal distribution inferential statistics classes. So this is a Gaussian transform. All you did was instead of using x1, you use x1 minus mu by sigma. So mu is given by this. Sigma is summation of xi minus mu whole square i equals to 1, 2, 3. So this is what is your sigma. So now if you use x1 minus mu by sigma, x2, x2 minus mu by sigma and x3 minus mu by sigma. So now all of these three points, if you sum them up, their new mean, mean new is equals to zero and their sigma new equals to one. You can verify that by yourself, by checking yourself, what is the new mean and the new standard deviation. But as of now, you can take my word for the moment and you can check at later state, you can check later that the mean, the new mean comes out to be zero and the new standard deviation comes out to be one. So this technique is called standardization where you are basically centering your distribution around zero and your variance is coming out to be one. So obviously before we do that, we have to obviously understand this is something you can only do for numeric variables. You cannot do this for categorical variables. 
So first you have to basically separate out from your data set. So for that you first have to separate out your data set from numeric and the categorical variables. How do you choose numeric features? Basically anything which has the data type int 64 or a float 64 is basically your numeric feature. So now you have the numeric features and you have the numeric data. So now this is these are some of this is how your numeric data looks like. This is how your categorical data looks like. And now uh, one more step before we actually apply the standardization which is basically imputing the values because if there are missing values we cannot calculate the mean or we cannot calculate the st standard deviation right? because there would be error. So what we have to do is basically first take the imputer. This is something we have already done as we have explained in case of. So this is something we have already done when we were trying to replace missing values. This is something you are already familiar by now. You use this library which is called imputer from there you just say which are the values you want to impute and with what strategy. In this case we are imputing all the missing values with median values and after we do that we are ready to go ahead and do standardization right. So first we check if there is any missing value we clearly see there is none. We clearly see here if imputed df which is a new df does have many missing values we see that is none. So now we are going to try and do some standardization. So now this let's now let's apply some standardization on the imputed df. So to add, do the standardization you use in scikit you use this already inbuilt function which is called a scale and this is how you do it you can clearly see here all your values are now probably lying with a mean you cannot obviously check it right now you can do it at your end try calculating the mean for each of the standardized features and see if their mean comes out to be zero and if the standard deviation comes out to be one. Now there is an alternative approach to standardization which is called scaling which is almost similar but not exactly. In case of standardization you are basically making sure that your mean basically comes out to zero and your uh, standard deviation comes out to be one right. So basically trying to make sure that almost all the data points are lying in a normal distribution. In scaling you are doing something different which is basically instead of making sure all your data points lying on a normal distribution you are going to check if your all your data points are lying are going to lie within some predefined range and this normally predefined range tends to be 0 to 1 right. So what you are going to do here is this. So now you have all your points x1, x2, x3 right. So your minimum of x1, x2, x3 is probably much less than 0 and your max is probably greater than 1 right. So you don't want to go ahead with this kind of data right. So this is how it looks like. So now before we kind of jump into figure on, figuring out how actually we take care of scaling and how exactly what that happens let's first understand what is the problem with scaling. So in case of linear regression you must have seen that there were some features which were of the range 10 to the power 5 with scale 10 to the power 5. There were some which were in the scale 10 to the power 1. Now if you compare the coefficients you would very easily be confused you would not know which is the what is the most important feature among all of them because if you have feature which are very high dimension like 10 to the power 5 their parameters the weight that you would assign to that feature would tend to be lower right whereas if you have something which is 10 to the power 1 you would tend to assign a much higher weight. So that is some problem that you have with uh, having all your features at different scales right. So what are you going to do about this? What are you going to do? So all you are going to do is basically bring them out to the same scale. All your features should be scaled between the same range right. So your, your feature 1 is also scaled between 0 to 1. Your feature 2 is also scaled between 0 to 1. Feature 3 is also scaled between 0 to 1. And that's the most intuitive thing you would want to do with right. If you have multiple scales you, you cannot interpret the weights. You, do not, you really do not know which is the feature that your model gave a lot of importance to because because the scales are different you would have different weight param the scales of the weightage also attached to them would be widely different. So if you bring them all down to one particular scale which is say between 0 to 1 then it would be much easier for you to apply uh, linear regression and interpret the results. So that's exactly what we are going to do. So there's something which is you can directly use this particular library as in this particular function which is called a standard scalar you can use that directly which basically would directly reduce your values into 0 to 1 or if you want to do it more manually more algorithmically this is what you do. So you can instead of so you can basically take your min value which is minimum of all your x1 x2 x3 and your max value which is maximum of x1 x2 x3 and then you can basically do for each value x1 minus min 
by max minus min same with x2 minus min by max minus min and same here this is one idea the other one is directly dividing it by x1 minus max and x2 minus x2 by max so this would at least ensure that all your values are capped at one right so this would ensure all your values lie between 0 to 1 if you do this particular transformation you would make sure all your values are capped between uh, all your values are less than one right so this is again something so you know your zero it, all your values would be lying between zero to one right so if you do this transformation if you do this particular transformation you would make sure all your values are in the inclusive so this is zero to one where both the values would be occupied and this is zero to one uh, so don't get carried away with the mathematical notations the idea is that you can use any of these tricks so x1 minus min by max minus min x2 minus min by max minus min or you can use x1 by max x2 by max and so on and so forth right so what we are going to do is this right so now how do we do scaling right so x1 x2 x3 so there are three features so first you calculate max uh, max of x1 x2 x3 min of x1 x2 x3 so let's call this max only and let's call this variable min so if you now do this particular transform right x1 minus max by max minus min similarly x2 minus max by max minus min and similarly x3 minus max by max minus min so if you do this transform what you have ensured is this value this value and this value all of them are lying in the range 0 to 1 right so this is one easy way to do scaling there are multiple other techniques to do scaling as well and you can explore some of them at your own convenient time in the resource section log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.